Welcome back. That is my tribute to Welcome Back, Cotter. Thank you very much. <laughs> Day 66 of a screenwriter's journey. Let's get into it. Uh, we're at the racetrack. And so, yeah, I, I ended yesterday talking about how Holly's got to break the news to all of them, which, you know, she could have. She could have told Lexi. Oh, dear. I left off the word we actually need to head straight to the cabins. Gosh, darn it. Um, I need to fix that. So she's telling her, telling Holly the timeline's been moved up, which I mean, it kind of has, but she's kind of still hiding what is going on. And um, so Holly says, I'll explain on the way. And before we had the whole thing about, hey, you can drive my car, I'll show you how fast it goes, which is pretty lame. So this way, without explaining why, she just opens up the door, literally and figuratively, for Gary to go with her. Um, but we don't go into their car, we go into Gary's car, as I said, which I think is an interesting and uh, inspired choice by myself. And I, <laughs> I have to admit... Um, I don't remember, I don't, I don't think I had that in my index cards and on the outline, but maybe I did. But sometimes, you know, it just, inspiration strikes when you're writing, not when you're writing, I mean, writing a script, screenplay, you're writing dialogue and scenes and all that stuff. It doesn't necessarily hit you when you're writing index cards and outlines, which, is my justification for not spending nearly enough time doing that. I mean, it's kind of crazy because when you think about it, the script is in, well, in <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, the script is the pre-production for the movie, right? And they always say the more time you spend in pre-production, basically, generally, the better your production is going to be. But you could be argued that the, the writing of the script is the production and all the outlining and notes and et cetera is the pre-production. So I should probably spend more time in pre-production and follow my own advice. But in the grand scheme of things, as I said, I can justify it by saying that the script itself is pre-production because the movie obviously hasn't been made. Aha, so there. Okay, all right. So now we're here at the end of Act 1 and Holly's coming clean. And Lexi, I can just picture her you know gosh not not scared but just shocked taken aback um you know her emotions you're leaving for good now except just imagine when a real actress delivers the lines um so holly doesn't want to get into it too much but she's explaining and i think i'm going to work on this dialogue yes um yeah, I, she certainly wasn't going to say I had an offer I can't refuse. So, yeah, I'm just updating this again, reflecting the new reality. And just I can just <laughs> picture this super vividly of of this scene between the two of them and Lexi just throwing her arms around Holly and Holly just. Not, you know, not being freaked out, but just being kind of taken aback, surprised. Um, and then just the emotions, really, that it triggers more in Holly than it does in Lexi. Because as an 18-year-old, you know, your emotions are still probably more on your sleeve, typically. And Holly certainly are not. And so she kind of bypasses anything she could say like, oh, I'm really going to miss you too or whatever and just goes right on to the facts. My supervisor's name is Paul Adwell. Maybe that should be Atwell. What do you think? Leave a comment, subscribe, like, share, and watch because there will be more. I haven't changed anything in several minutes remembering that it speeded up five hundred percent so what's going on here even i don't believe in that yeah, look at larry's line even i don't believe that think that would last strike it through virtually all right 
So yeah, I'm just kind of playing with this here. As I said, she's not going to, Holly is not one that is going to have a big uh, emotional scene. She's not going to really say anything. So she just moves on kind of a, just the facts, ma'am, in a female sort of way. But I think that should be at well. I think I need to go back and change it. Not that it matters. All right. Um, don't go all squishy on me. Mm, yeah, not loving that line. So now she, yeah, she doesn't hug her until much later. Which, I don't know that that makes sense. Because she just says, don't go all squishy on me. And then she throws her arms around her. Which I guess, maybe that does. Because that's exactly what she's doing. Um... Well, I'm changing more dialogue. Why don't you tell me sooner? Oh, hmm, interesting. So she, there's another situation where she, someone asks a question and the answer is just uh, obviously avoiding the answer for some reason. And I think I've spoken at length about that, so I'm not going to speak uh, anymore. I'll check in on you, which is true. You guys look after her. Um... You guys, so she, I mean, since the other guy's friends aren't there, she's she's speaking to Larry, but about everyone else. All right, um, so we're in the cabin. Nothing really has changed there. Did you see her as much as I could stand? Now listen, watch carefully, read carefully. Would it give you closure to go back and punch her in the face? Oh dear, I got rid of that. Uh-oh. Oh, all right. I just, I think I'm going to copy and paste it somewhere, I hope. <laughs> I'm sure I will. Sorry. Um, oh, gosh, it's funny how I, <laughs> I think I have a line that's going to stick, and then I immediately go back and rewrite it. Uh, so, yeah, so I think I realized before, and I don't think I'm changing it in this draft, that these two don't know that she's leaving. And that's obviously pretty important because it may not be so big a deal to them. They think, you know, she's going out to check on something, whatever, and then she'll be back in five minutes or a minute or 10 minutes or something. So that definitely changes the dynamics because before I know Gary especially was all upset with her and Abby was to some extent. And then they had, um, you know, I think a longer conversation, which hopefully will get cut, cut down a little bit. Although we still do get the sense from Abby that um, from her dialogue there, if I'd have known, I'd have gone with her too, that what she's, you know, maybe not what she's really saying, but how Gary interprets that is, yeah, I should have gone with her, with her, not Holly, but of course, Lexi. What kind of life? So they're, you know, they're talking about two different things here. Um, Gary's line obviously has to change. So, and he's not, he's not even saying, when do you think she'll be back, but think she'll be back. So, um, you know, there's that whole dynamic there that I explore just a tiny little bit, not really the crush, but whatever. So that, I think that kind of adds to that in a way. All right. So yeah, the closure to go back and punch her in her face. Remember that line. It could come in, could come back as a bookend or maybe it already did. Um, <laughs> I think it already did. All right. That when Holly says, I'll settle for never seeing it again, I, I've gone back and forth about her because obviously that's what they're talking about, about Rachel. But when Paul says, punch her in the face, and so what Holly's literally saying is, I'll settle for never seeing her face again. All right. And then, yeah, so I wanted to get across 
in this scene that Paul can see that, in fact, she is having second thoughts. So she's he's giving her a command. Um, and that's, to me, kind of a clever way. Instead of saying, are you having second thoughts? Are you, Is your heart winning out over your head? That he just kind of gives it yeah, off Holly's ook. Oops. The day ends and I've got at least one typo to fix. Well, that's what keeps us coming back. Day 66 in the can. I think some good progress. Not the longest day in the world, but not the shortest. Looking ahead, I see day 67 could be a whopper. So if you're if you're watching this as they appear in real time, you've got a whole nother day to wait, but I think it'll be worth it. And I'm going to go on one of my little spiels again, a very short one of if anyone has been watching this from day one, you don't know how much that means to me. And I'm sure that sounds super corny. Um, whether you're watching them day by day or you've you started and you skip some and you've come back or I don't care how, even if you've this is the only one you've watched. I, I appreciate it so much. Um and I don't know why, because I'm the one who's uh, bearing my soul here. No, um, showing you my screenwriting secrets that have made me the uh, writer, director, and producer of three films I had to make myself because no one else would make them. But, uh, and I've said it countless times, um, I hope you're learning something. If you're a newbie, if you're not a newbie, I frankly don't know why you'll be watching this other than saying, hey, I could do that. Maybe I'll do that with my next script. Um, and I've already thought about, hey, maybe I'll do this with my next script. I don't know if I could not not do it. Or maybe that's a triple negative. Anyways, um, so just one more time. Thank you so much. And if you have subscribed and shared and commented, which I always sort of joke about, but it means a ton to me just because it's cool to know that people are watching. If they are, I'll probably wake up every morning to see how many views my latest video has. Uh, and if I can't count them on both hands and toes, that would be totally awesome. So thanks again from near the bottom of my heart, maybe the very bottom. I'll get back to you on that. Um, but I'll be back tomorrow, and I hope you will be too. For day 67, because today's day 66, of, let's say it together, a screenwriter's journey. Goodbye.